Hello. As we begin our next quarter, I wanted to refresh and remind, especially for those new students or those have, that have forgotten, in Edmentum, you have your set of classes. If you have credit recovery to complete old classes, you will find them here. The two classes that we will be working on for this time period are culinary arts, aka culinary creative arts, and biology, which is life science semester vol A, biology. So these assignments or these classes are where your assignments are originated from. However, we put all of the necessary assignments and work in Google Classroom. That is done so it lessens one place you have to go to see all of your work. If you are working on old coursework or credit recovery, you will find those classes here. If you do not, ask your teacher. So let's get started. Select the course that you want to work on. And in this case, we're going to start with culinary arts. You click on all activities. And when you first get in here, you will see there's nothing completed. And you will see that it shows no assignments. You have to scroll over here or move over here and click show. This is the first unit. Then we go into the next, obviously. So you click on the assignment and start the tutorial. You might want to do this if you don't like watching my videos. That is perfectly fine. Whatever works best for you. However, it is not mandatory. So in order to start the tutorial, you click play. Now, notice back here that after I was done doing the tutorial, the option to take the history and development of culinary arts mastery test would most likely be unlocked. These should remain locked unless you ask for them to be unlocked because we are taking all of the tests in Google Classroom. So note that they will remain locked until they, a teacher opens them up for you. Okay, let's check out the tutorial. The tutorials feature most of the same things. You have a table of contents. You have a section for notes. These are not the guided notes. These are if you wanted to say, this author wrote this uh, book. I don't know why it's not typing. That's not good. Um, so you may highlight something and then paste it in your notes. So that way later you could see the tutorial contents or maybe the authors of certain books, etc. You may do notes on your own on paper or in Google Docs. Your notes for this class are not mandatory to share with me, unlike the guided notes for biology. There are no guided notes for culinary, so we, we don't have that as an option. But don't worry, we still have projects. So the glossary can be brought up here. I will also make it available in the classroom resources. We have a dictionary, speaking tools. This helps if you need any of the items read to you. It doesn't read every single thing, but it's helpful. The click to speak highlights as it reads. So that's helpful. There's also a translator in many different languages and a highlight tool. If you highlight yours, it should stay. And then you could come back and look at it later. All right, so tutorial contents. What is culinary arts? Lesson activity, history of culinary arts in a state, historical figures and events, 
Culinary Arts as a Profession. Introduction and summary are not part of the contents different than any other lesson necessarily. So later, when I talk about your class project, each week you will have a creative arts project or a CAP. The CAP needs to reflect your learning in what is culinary arts, lesson activity, the history of culinary arts in a state, and historical figures and events, along with culinary arts as a profession. So when I'm talking about the tutorial's contents, this is where you find that. This is important because each week you will need to make a creative arts project that reflects your learning in these areas. Some lessons, tutorials have less contents, some have more. So those are important to be aware of. Do you notice that you begin the day at breakfast with culinary techniques such as brewing and toasting, when you prepare a cup of coffee or make toast? Later in the day, as you prepare lunch, you may use many more culinary techniques such as cutting, boiling, baking, frying, seasoning, and arranging food items. You'll notice more culinary techniques in the evening when you dine at a restaurant with some friends. If you visit the restaurant's kitchen, you'll notice a chef and his team preparing, cooking, and arranging food for customers. Chefs and their teams are professionals who specialize in the culinary arts. The profession and practice of the culinary arts goes back to early times when humans first learned to use fire for cooking. A historical perspective will give you a solid foundation for building a career in the culinary arts. In this lesson, you'll identify important milestones in the development of the culinary arts. You'll also identify the important contributions made by chefs and notable culinary figures. Then you'll define restaurants and describe the food service industry. In addition, you'll explain the responsibilities of the members of a kitchen brigade. You'll also describe the evolution of kitchen equipment. Finally, you'll identify the educational qualifications required to take up the culinary arts as a profession. What is culinary arts? All right, apparently there is no text to speech on this one. So what is culinary arts? The term culinary arts is the set of skills associated with preparing, cooking, and displaying food for human consumption. The core skill is cooking. Cooking refers to the application of heat to make food edible. The culinary arts, however, cover a wide range of skills, planning meals and procuring raw items, getting raw and cooked food items ready for serving, adding spices to garnish foods, cleaning and cutting vegetables and fruits, cleaning and dressing poultry, meats and fish, making salads and preparing desserts. People with these skills have the professional designations of chef or cook. They are also called culinarians or culinary artists. They may work in households or in service establishments like hotels and restaurants. Historians believe that cooking originated about 12,000 years ago. The first instances of cooking may have been when humans made the accidental discovery of charred animal bodies in forest fires. Mm. Let's trace the evolution of culinary arts. In particular, we'll study the development of formal recipes and cookbooks, culinary techniques, and influences and trends that shape the modern kitchen. Development of recipes and cookbooks. 
So as I was scrolling through, I noticed that these do not have the speak feature or the read feature. So if you would rather read it than listen to me read it, feel free to go through the tutorial. If you need it read for you, that's my job. That's what I'm doing here now. So if you need any, if you have any questions about what something says, please let us know. Development of recipes and cookbooks. The formalization of cooking as a culinary art goes back to the early forms of recipes. Recipes help people share their knowledge and skills in cooking with others. The earliest preserved record of a cookbook is from a Greek man living in Sicily called Archistratus. He wrote a treatise on food around 350 BC. That's 2,371 years ago. Called Hediapathia, which in Greek means pleasant living. I don't know. It's all Greek to me. <laughs> Archistratus collected recipes not only from Sicily and Greece, but also from Italy and neighboring countries. Another Greek writer, Athenius, wrote a book in the 2nd century BC called Dipenosophiate, which means the dinner experts. It was in the form of a story and it included many interesting recipes. Hawao, a personal cook of the Mongolian king, Kublai Khan, who lived from 1215 to 1294, wrote a book, The Important Things to Know About Eating and Drinking. It was a collection of recipes for soups. Amalia Simmons wrote the first American cookbook Published in 1796, it was called American Cookery, or The Art of Dressing. This popular cookbook was reprinted for 35 years. Her recipes were the first to record the use of cornmeal, which was a common ingredient of the early American diet. The recipes included the classic American pumpkin pie. Evolution of culinary techniques. Culinary techniques have evolved through history. The earliest improvements began with the introduction of earthenware, such as clay vessels. Now notice, this right here sounds like a test answer. However, just because it's familiar might just make it in the sounds correct category, but it is not the correct answer on the test. Clay vessels. Um, didn't the 21 Pilots have a record called Vessels? They did. I have it. I'll show it to you later if you ask. The cultivation of edible plants such as roots and tubers and the domestication of livestock such as cows and pigs. With these improvements, nomadic tribes could form settlements because they could get a steady supply of nutrients from foodstuffs such as milk and meat. Shaped clay vessels supplemented the earliest known technique of roasting the earliest known technique of cooking is roasting. Interesting. Cooking skills became refined as new techniques such as stewing, braising, and boiling joined the mix. So, notice that clay vessels, roasting, stewing, braising, and boiling they all are around the same spot of this on page 9, slide 9. Cooking skills became refined. I already said that. Cooks in settlements learned greater skills with experimentation. 
they came up with techniques like baking, frying, and pickling. They discovered a variety of food preservation techniques such as chilling. That's what I do on the weekends. I just be chilling, you know. Uh, salting, smoking, not like that. And drying to extend the useful quality of fish and meats. Creative cooks invented new types of utensils to prepare and store foods. For example, they designed a variety of clay pots for boiling and holding liquid. The culinary arts became more refined with all of these innovations. Anthropologists estimate that the use of heat for cooking began 250,000 years ago. People cooked food by burning wood or heating rocks. They also used steam on leaf wraps. They dug out ovens in the ground or made ovens out of hot stones. The oldest oven discovered so far dates from 6,500 years ago. Cooking on an open fire was the earliest culinary technique. Also one of my favorites, especially for a rotisserie uh, pork called al pastor. Boiling evolved as the technique, uh, sorry, as the next technique for cooking food. So roasting came first, then boiling. It led to the design of custom utensils. The Egyptians used small vessels hung over a fire to concentrate heat. They also invented sealable storage silos to preserve surplus grains for many years. Corn kernels that are over 3,000 years old will still pop. Probably has something to do with these sealing and storing techniques. I don't know. Native Americans used clay vessels for cooking and storing foods much before European settlers arrived with pots and kettles. Stone cooking pots used for cooking maize or maize evolved about 7,000 BC in Central America. The pots were so heavy that people often left them permanently in the center of the cooking space. The heaviness of the cookware was one of the reasons why fireplaces became the central feature of kitchens in the designs of households. Fireplaces continued to dominate kitchens until the 1850s. Thereafter, cast iron stoves became popular. The stove's increased heating capacity sped up the cooking process. It's kind of like a kettle or a cauldron. New influences and trends. In the 17th and 18th centuries, food became a mark of national identity in many parts of Europe. Transportation of foods such as beans, tomatoes, corn, and potatoes between countries influenced many cultures. Industrialization was a major influence on the culinary arts. In the late 19th century, the mass production and marketing became common. They changed the way people perceived and consumed food. Big companies processed, packaged, and preserved foods. Factory processed cereals became a popular ingredient of the modern breakfast. In the 1920s, freezing evolved as a new industrial process. Some of the earliest outdoor cafeterias and fast food chains became popular in this period. Although stores sell many foods nationally, there has been a parallel growth in ethnic and regional foods. Today, food is a cultural equalizer rather than a market sorry, a marker of different cultures. People of all backgrounds eat varieties of hamburgers, rice, seafoods, noodles, 
and pizzas with equal relish. And by the way, I think that's a pun. Affluent diners, however, pursue expensive food fads that tend to define higher living standards. In some cases, food choices may reflect a person's philosophical attitudes or a way to express ethnic identity. We're speaking here, they are speaking about philosophical, meaning like I choose not to drink coffee that is not grown or be, the beans are not grown or purchased in fair trade uh, environments or I don't eat meat because of how they are how the animals are treated. Another uh, way that it expresses us individually is ethnic identity. Certain ethnicities either um, consume a variety of ethnic related foods as as far as you know we think about the aisles or the type of restaurant that is that that ethnicity uh, based also some ethnicities choose to not consume certain things for certain reasons and so uh, that may also express who you are in your ethnic identity. Question, select the correct answer. What is an early indicator for the formalization of cooking as a culinary art? Ovens, recipes, stoves, fireplaces, or pots? I think recipes because it's formalizing what you're doing. Correct. All right, noise. Activity. Research on the internet to find articles or blogs about the history of culinary arts. For any one of the states in the United States, write your findings in the form of a short report, 300 to 400 words. Mention any special foods, customs, culinary inventions, equipment, techniques, or recipes associated with the state. Now, Notice that the his that this says the history of culinary arts in a state. And note that in the tutorial contents, it says lesson activity, history of culinary arts in a state. This is one of the components of your CAP, your creative art project. So this activity you do not have to do in the lesson, but you need to have it reflected on your on your cap. So in your cap, in the creative arts project, you will research the inner on the internet to find articles or blogs about the history of culinary arts for any one of the states in the US. All right, so your information for this activity needs to go on your cap. We don't have guided notes, so you need to write this information or display this information creatively in your cap. So I picked a state. I picked California. History of culinary arts in Colorado, I mean. I'm sorry. I picked Colorado because that's where I was born. This very first link said journeying through a history of Colorado food. So I clicked on that. This is where I got images and captions and information about the history of food for Colorado the history of culinary arts in Colorado, sorry. All right, once you have found a site or more to research your state and then how you choose to display it in your creative arts project, your cap, that part is up to you. But here's what I did. 
So I opened up a new tab. I went into my Google area here. I went into slides and I picked a template and I built a slideshow. I actually used recipe showcase here. And then from there, I saved culinary creative arts project cap instructions and example. This is mine. This is the one I was making. So, so we have this slide. Now, notice that the slide has information about the state. It has the directions. And I use captions and quote marks. None of these are my words. I, I copied them straight off, like you would copy off from guided notes. So, the interesting thing about that is I didn't just copy down words and put it into my slideshow. I copied down the information from a website and at the very last slide I made a slide that says the history and development of culinary arts sources. So this is where I am citing the information. So what is culinary arts? I got that information here. The lesson activity, history of culinary arts in a state. I went to this website. I got the information from that website. Where did I get that quote? Or sorry, the address. I copied it from this URL. I also gave the caption I copied the caption as well. You do not have to do this. You do not have to make a slideshow, but you do have to cite where you got your information. This says to research a state on the internet through a blog or website, something like that. So this is what I did, and this is how I both recorded where it goes sorry, where I got the information, and I, I made my creative project on Google Slides. Once you are done, you would then share the link in the assignment as you would your Google, um, sorry, as you would your guided notes, your Doc Hub uh, link. So it's similar. Oops, dang it. Historical figures and events. Historical figures and events. People recognize chefs for their skills and knowledge. They have created unique recipes and cooking techniques that were handed down across generations. Here are some of the famous chefs in history. Famous chefs in history. And their notable contributions to the culinary arts. 14th century. Guolami Tyrell, also known as Talevent, wrote Le Viandier, the first cookery book in French. That sounds like a test question. This guy wrote the first book cookery book in French. So Terrell or Tail Event wrote La Viandier. The cook or sorry the book is a treatise on the prevailing cuisine of northern France. Tail Event promoted the growth of Burgundy wines. He played a major role in shaping French cuisine and cooking techniques. In the period between 1330 and 1395, he was a cook to the court of France. The 15th century, Martino di Rossi, 
also called Martino de Rubius, Maestro Martino, or Martino of Como, was a highly reputed culinary expert. His book, Libro de Arte Coconera, Coconeria, his book, Libro de Arte Coconeria, that was Martino de Rossi, wrote The Art of Cooking. Sounds like a test answer. Published in 1465, is an important addition to culinary literature. It documents the ev evolution of Renaissance cuisine. Many consider him to be the first celebrity chef of the West. He doesn't look like he enjoyed eating. Jean Anthelme Brillat Severin. The French expert, French culinary expert. In the 16th century, Bartolomeu, Bartolomeu, Scappi, was a well-known Italian chef of the 16th century. He cooked for six popes. His influential cookbook, Opera del Arte del Cuisinier, or The Art of Cooking, so Bartolomeo Scapi, Scapi, he wrote Opera del Arte del Consignere. That word right there. Well, that looks like a test question on, or test answer on page 16. Actually, every one of these where it mentions somebody cooking sounds like a test, or not cooking, uh, an author sounds like a test question. Heads up. The book describes many culinary techniques. It includes many recipes of his period. It also includes the first recorded image of a fork. And you bet I used that in my cap, because I thought that was neat. 17th century, Jean Anthelme Brillat Savarin was a French culinary expert and politician. He aimed to raise cooking to the level of a science. He was an early advocate of a healthy diet free of starchy elements. Starchy would be like a pasta or potatoes. His famous work, Physiologie de Gout, the physiolo physiology of taste. So it's like how it physically changes things when, when you taste it was published in 1825. A dessert, a garnish, and a cheese carry his name. For example, Timbal Brillat Severin is a dessert in his honor. I couldn't find a good picture of it, but it doesn't look that appetizing. Another famous French chef of the 17th century was Fracos Vatel, who was the head cook of Nick Nicholas Faquet and Prince Louis II. Vettel was in charge of a large banquet for 2,000 guests hosted in honor of Louis VIII. Is that Louis VIII? Oh, I had to look it up. It This isn't Louis VIII. It's Louis XIV. All those Louis. Louis, Louis. In 1671, at the Chateau de Chantilly, the Chateau de Chantilly. So, wow, what a big party. I have never cooked for that many people. <laughs> Oof. Paul Tremeau. Head chef in the court of King Stanislaus, Augustus 
Poniatowski. This guy. Uh, Marie Antoine Carême, the first celebrity chef. 19th century, Marie Antoine Carême is regarded as the first globally recognized celebrity chef. He created the four groups of French sauces, which are still in use today. He was the original one that um, Post Malone stole that line from. I'm saucing, I'm saucing on you. Oh, okay. Anyways, uh, he introduced the grande or hate cuisine, a fashionable style of French cooking. Royal families and the very rich people of France indulged in this style. Karime was a proponent of cold buffets. He found ways to chill and preserve cooked food, cooked food, with the taste almost unchanged. He wrote many books about recipes, kitchen management, and the history of French cooking. The French journalist Marthe Distel introduced the first magazine. La Cuisinière Cordon Bleu in 1895. So that sounds like a uh, test question answer too. Distel promoted the magazine by giving subscribers cooking lessons conducted by chefs in the kitchens of the Palais Royal. Eventually, the classes evolved into a professional culinary school. Maybe you've heard of it which became the current Le Cordon Bleu. 20th century, Georges Auguste Escoffier was a French chef who created the management hierarchy known as the Kitchen Brigade. So that's like the chain of command. He was also a culinary writer. He popularized and modernized traditional French cooking methods. He set up the system of writing meal menus in the order in which the food was served. Well, that makes sense. Aspiring cooks and chefs use his book, Le Guide Culinaire, as a training manual. Cool. What I found fairly interesting was how many of these books are available in reprint on like amazon.com. Drag the tiles to the correct boxes to complete the pairs. Match the culinary experts with their achievements. So I remember that this guy had a dessert named after him. That's an achievement. Oh, dropped it. Dropped it like it's hot. Okay, seriously? And I'm using a mouse. Okay. Uh, he was well-known chef during the Renaissance and cooked for six popes. I think that was this guy or Scappy. Oof. Uh... Okay, and then Nicholas wrote, uh, uh, opened first high dining. Oh man, this is tough. He wrote La Vidire, the first cookie book in French. That's this guy, I think. I don't know. This is taking way too long, huh? But hey, you're sticking with me, and it's supposed to be fun after all. Oh man, I gotta get better at video games. Maybe I can con 
connect my controller to this. Okay, let's see how I did. Incorrect. Try again. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Here's the correct answers now. All right, so a dessert, a garnish. Oh, well, I knew that one. Oh, man, all of those are wrong. Let's try again. I'll be back. I know it makes it more difficult for you to see. However, if you push control minus and zoom out away from the activity, it actually makes it easier to click and drag these. Again, not necessarily that you do it, but it is, um, it is important because you may want to do it, especially for some of your other classes, like credit recovery. All right. Now, let's look at the correct answer. So we know that a dessert and a garnish was named after Jean and Thelme Brelat Servin, um, Bartolomeo Scappi. He was a well known chef during the Renaissance and cooked for six popes. Nicholas Appert, he started a factory to produce canned foods in 1804. Guillaume Tyrell, he wrote La Viandière, the first cookery book in French. And Antoine, or Antoine Bavirez, he opened the first highly quality dining restaurant in Paris in 1782. Advancements in Agriculture. The earliest transition to agriculture and animal recurring rearing, sorry, occurred in the areas around the Middle East and Asia around 9000 BC. Settlers in southwestern Asia cultivated wheat and barley and raised herds of sheep and sheep and goats. The Egyptians devoted dang it, Bobby the Egyptians developed grain agriculture before 7000 BC. Agriculture developed in parts of the American continent between 7000 BC and 3000 BC. Domesticated crops including corn, beans, cassafas, peppers, squashes, and potatoes by 6500 BC there were domesticated cattle in Greece. Rice, which may have originated in China and India, was cultivated throughout much of Asia by 5000 BC and AD, sorry, by AD 800, the open field system of crops was common in Europe. Farmers divided the land into several fields and rotated the crops in each field yearly. The reason why you rotate the crops is because the plants draw out nutrients. You need time for the nutrients to be replenished in the soil prior to replanting it. In the 1400s, explorers introduced plants and agricultural project products from Asia and America into Europe. They carried back coffee, tea, and indigo from Asia to Europe. Potatoes, tomatoes, corn, and beans were among the plants brought from America. Note that tomatoes were brought from America. It makes you rethink a lot of Italian recipes. Some of these plants expanded people's diets in parts of Europe. This is an image of white traders bartering with the the Indians. Uh, we would type, n label them uh, Native Americans nowadays out of respect. All right, so this is an image of a small plow. In the early 1700s, new crop rotation methods evolved in Europe and England improving previous systems. Charles Townshend, Townshend, a British politician, developed a four-field rotation system in England. 
Farmers rotated turnip crops with barley, wheat, clover, and ryegrass crops. In 1701, the English inventor Jethro Toll, an answer that would sound familiar on the test, but isn't the correct answer. And he also won as a rock album, a, or sorry, heavy metal against uh, Metallica, I think. Yeah, check it out. It's pretty interesting. But different Jethro Tull. I digress. He introduced the horse-drawn seed drill, the device which cut furrows. This is a small ditch. It cut furrows and dropped seeds at the same, sorry, dropped in seeds, ended the time-consuming process of sowing seeds by hand. In 1834, Cyrus McCormick, what? Cy Holy cow, he created the first grain harvesting machine in the United States. John Deere, the founder of Deere and Company, Painted or patented the steel plow in 1837. Wow. And almost 200 years later, the business is still going strong. It was stronger, sharper, and more efficient than wooden or iron plows. Damp soil did not stick to it. In 1842, Sir John Benet Laws an English entrepreneur and agricultural scientist, entrepreneur, person who does, uh, makes companies and uh, makes money on their own, sets out to make money, and an agricultural scientist, the scientist that studies agricultural advancements, started the first factory in England to make superphosphates. Super phosphates. These chemicals helped to build the global fertilizer industry. Again, agriculture education leads you to understand phosphates, which help build the fertilizer industry. You might need fertilizer when you're growing plants. The 1850s through the 1900s saw the expansion of railroad and steamship lines. They opened up new markets. People could ship perishable products over long distances as methods of refrigeration and canning improved. In 1866, Gregor Mendel published the results of his studies in Hereditary in Austria. His work on the inheritance of genetic traits paved the way for improving crops through genetics. So genetically modified organisms started around 1866. Significant events in culinary history. Westerners consider French cuisine to be sophisticated. Yeah. An event that influenced the development of French cuisine date back, dates back to 1533. In that year, Catherine de Medicis, a Florentine princess, married the Duke of Orleans. Later, he moved to a place and they named New Orleans. I'm just kidding. Who later became Henry II of France. Many Florine... Florentine chefs came to France along with Catherine. They passed on their cooking skills to the French chefs. Consequently, the French culinary arts rose to a new level of refinement. The French Revolution, which took place at the end of the 18th century, was another event that influenced French cuisine. Once confined, to working within limited areas called guilds, French chefs were now free to experiment with any type of food. This freedom led to a liberated period 
and more chefs began to create different types of dishes. The European discovery of the American continent was a major event in this history of food. Europeans discovered novel foods such as yams, cassavas, corn, beans, tomatoes, and potatoes. The natives of America encountered cattle, sheep, and pigs for the first time. So um, the Europeans brought, found here that, or, you know, like, hey, this is growing here, discovered might be a stretch, yams, cassavas, corn, beans, tomatoes, and potatoes. And then the Native Americans were introduced to things like sheep, cattle, and pigs for the first time. Chocolate, coffee, and sugar moved from America to Europe. The widespread demand for these ingredients created the base for today's global consumer-orientated food businesses. Catherine de Medicis, getting married to Henry II of France. Oh, it's a wedding photo. Diners listened to a live band at the Sobrino de Botin in Madrid, Spain. Oh, I miss listening to live music at restaurants. Restaurants and the food service industry. A restaurant is a communal place where paying customers come to dine. Restaurants are popular in every part of the world. Roadside inns were probably the earliest form of restaurants, typically located in the countryside. Inns offered meals to travelers at, co at a common table. Restaurants, as customer-orientated businesses, originated in the 18th century. At these places, a customer could select dishes from a menu that showed printed prices. Started in 1725, the Sobrino de Botin in Madrid, Spain, is the oldest restaurant in the world today. And so I, I highlighted that, copied it, and pasted it in. And look, they have a website. Restaurante Botin. Casa Fondadad in 1725. Wow. Ooh, let's see what's on the, the menu. The current menu consists of... Oh, this is some information. Oh, look. Rosado o Blanco. Rose or white. Oh, these are wines. Disregard that. So, you've got black sausage from Burgos. You've got uh all these things anchovies anyways that's pretty neat and they have an interest a 25 or 40 i wonder what that that means maybe it's a a way of writing it but anyways so that's quite crazy that this company has been around that long Ooh, and look at all the art on their webpage. This is art. It takes creativity to create these images in an appealing, artistic, and new way. It's also art that serves a purpose. It's part of the industry to gather customers. I know that if I go somewhere and it doesn't look appealing, I probably won't order it. So I also really enjoy taking pictures of my food. I like showing it off. Wow. So old. Neat. Anywho, back to the lesson. The word restaurant comes from the French word restaurer, which means to restore. A Parisian soup vendor called Bollinger, or Bollinger first used the word to describe a communal eating place in 1765. So wait a minute. There's a restaurant in Spain 
that's still open from 1725, but 40 years after that was when a restaurant becomes a French word. Wow. The first restaurant in the form that is now common where customers order food from menus and sit at tables during fixed business hours was the Grand Tavern de Londres, the Great Tavern of London. In 18, sorry, 1782, Antoine Boulevers founded the restaurant in Paris. He was a successful restaurateur and author of a popular cookbook, Les Arts de Cuisiner. Again, that's a test question. Page 23 or slide 23. Restaurants became a common sight in France after the French Revolution. In this period, George Auguste Escoffier, a skilled chef, restaurateur, and culinary writer, created many elements of traditional French cuisine. Escoffier also created the hierarchy of the kitchen known as the Kitchen Brigade. The style of dining in which customers are served with a platter of food items arranged in a pleasing way is known as service à la russe, service in the Russian style. Hmm, interesting. Around 1810, the Russian prince Alexander Borsovich Karakin introduced this dining style to the French. That's pretty interesting. Served a, with a platter of food arranged in a pleasing way. 1810. In 1891, the YMCA of Kansas City started the first cafeteria in the United States. The drive-in restaurant concept serves patrons food in their vehicles. These restaurants became popular in the early 1950s. The first drive-in restaurant opened in Glendale, California in 1936. The McDonald's model of serving ready-to-eat standardized food through a chain of franchisees, franchises sorry, gave rise to the fast food business. Richard and Maurice Mack, McDonald, started the business in 1940. Raymond Albert Kroc, starting in 1954, spread the business worldwide. He created strict rules for franchisees and standardized the production of items such as milkshakes, hamburgers, and french fries. There's actually a pretty interesting documentary about it, about how they didn't necessarily create fast food, they just automatized it like the machines and their layout and the process. Culinary arts as a profession. Culinary arts as a profession. The introduction of a hierarchical system for managing the activities in and around the modern kitchen organized the practice of culinary arts. The French chef, Georges Auguste Escoffier, developed the idea of the kitchen brigade system in the 19th century in London Savoy Hotel. The structure used the organizing principles of the French army. His aim was to simplify and streamline all work in kitchens. In earlier times, there was chaos and duplication of efforts by the staff in kitchens. Under the brigade system, each staff member has a designation and defined responsibilities. In many small kitchens, there is a shortage, sorry, a shortage of skills. Hence, chefs modify the system to make the best use of available resources. 
innovations in equipment have also helped to compensate for some missing skills. The hierarchy distributes functions in a chain of command. A head chef can combine positions based on the needs of the kitchen. Let's look at the elements of a typical kitchen brigade. So you have the chef de cuisine. Underneath that, you have the sous chef, and you may have a relief chef or a tournant. I'm not going to read all the French pronunciations in the future. So underneath the sous chef, you have a sauce chef, a fish chef, a vegetable chef, a roast chef, a pantry chef, a butcher, and a pastry chef. Underneath, underneath each of them, you would have camis, and underneath them would be assistants. So the assistant to the commis, to the sous chef, would not necessarily be cutting, ve cutting vegetables and handing them to, you know, the vegetable chef, not their job. So in the military, you have uh, petty officers, chiefs, officers, executive officers, captain, something like that. That was a simplified way of saying it. All right. The kitchen brigade. You have the chef de cuisine, the sous chef, the chefs de partie. Woohoo! They they manage different parts of the food service. They're specialists in a type of cooking or have special skills with ingredients. For example, a chef de parte can be a saucier or a sauce chef or a rotisserie, a roast chef. You have the demi chef, the commis, and apprentice. Each of these have different jobs. The chef de cuisine is the chef, sorry, the chef de cuisine is the top or executive chef who is in charge of the entire kitchen and the food services. Sous chef, the sous chef is the second most important position. The sous chef coordinates and manages the next level, chef de parties. Also, he takes over in the absence of the chef de cuisine. Chefs de partie. The chefs de partie manage at different parts of the food service. They are specialists. I already read that. Demi chef. Demi chefs assist the chef de partie. They prepare the food in the specific station they are given. They take over when the chef de partie is absent. For example, the grill arden or the grill chef is a demi chef who takes over the tasks of rotisserie, a roast chef, when the latter is absent. Whew. Comis. Comis are really, sorry, are generally novices. They are given a specific station and assigned to do low skill work. Typically, they train to become demi chefs. So you may work your way up, but they are given low skill work. Maybe like they cut the vegetables or they grind the flour. I don't know, whatever. Apprentice. Apprentices are assistants required to work and study the culinary arts and typically put under training to become commis. So you work your way up. You don't start up here. Saucier or saucier is a sauce chef. They prepare sauces, finishes meat dishes, and in some cases may also manage fish items. The position of saucier is highly regarded in the brigade. So that means people look upon them with, with reverence or respect. Uh, rotisserie, the roast chef. The rotisserie dis directs cooks who do the roasting, deep frying, and boiling tasks. Grillardin, grill chef. 
The grill artisan prepares grilled foods, but in small kitchens, this task may be given to the rotisserie. Friturier or fry chef. The friturier prepares fried foods, and this task may also be taken up in small kitchens by the rotisserie. Poisonier or fish chef. Uh, think of the root word Poseidon from the sea, the king of the sea. Anyways, the poisoner prepares seafoods. Entree metier. The entree metier directs cooks who make vegetable dishes as well as soups. In small kitchens, the entree metier may take over the roles of the potager and the legumer. Potager, or soup chef, prepares soups and reports to the entremetier. In small kitchens, the potager's tasks are taken up by the entremetier. Legumier, or vegetable chef, legumes are like beans. Anyways, the legumier prepares vegetable dishes and reports to the entremetier. In small kitchens, the legumier's task are taken up by the entremetier. So, if you worked in a really large kitchen, you might be a legumier or a vegetable chef. But if you worked in a small kitchen, you might be an entremetier. In that case, you would do both of these jobs, assuming you didn't have somebody to do those. Okay. Chef Garde Manager, or the Pantry Chef. The Chef Garde Manager prepares cold cooked meats, creates salads, and sets up buffet displays. Mm. Patissier, or Pastry Chef. The Patissier prepares desserts and pasta. In case there is no Bollinger or Baker, the Pastry Pastry chef takes over the baking tasks. The connoisseur or confectioner. The connoisseur prepares candies and sweets. In small kitchens, the confiseur's task may be given to the pastrier. So again, moves up as needed. The glacier. The glacier prepares frozen or and cold desserts. In small kitchens, the glacier's task may be taken up by the patissier. The decorator, the decorator, yeah, that makes more sense, prepares special cakes and items for display. These may go to the patissier. Bollinger, or baker, prepares breakfast pastries, pastries breads, and cakes. In small kitchens, these may go to the pastier, patissier. Sorry, Whew. there's a reason why I have this red with the automated reading. The butcher prepares meats, poultry, and fish. The person may also be in charge of breading fish and meat items. Plonger or dishwasher. That's where most of you might start if you start working in the culinary industry. The plongeur cleans equipment and vessels and may be given routine tasks to prepare dishes. Marmiton, pot and pan washer. In some kitchens, the marmiton handles all the items instead of the plonger. Okay, so maybe one does the dishes that things are served out of and one washes the pots and pans that things are cooked out of. They sometimes require different handling, especially cast iron skillets. You don't wash a, pas a cast iron skillet the way you do a plate. A boyer, an announcer, or expedia expediator. This expediter, the a boyer, collects orders from diners and conveys it to the kitchen. So, this may, uh, this sounds like it's a waiter or a server, 
but there is also a job that's called expediter that takes the food from the kitchen and prepares it to be handed to the server. And in fancy restaurants, that's a job all on its own. Tornant or spare hand assists the sous chef and moves around the kitchen providing support to anyone who requires it. That sounds fun. All right, so evolution of kitchen equipment. The history of kitchen equipment dates back to the Bronze and Iron Ages between 3000 BC and 700 BC. When people used primitive vessels made of bronze and iron, the variety of equipment expanded with the growth of the Roman Empire. The Romans used meat hooks, mincers, colanders, spatulas, and ladles. They also used pots and kettles made of bronze and clay. During the Middle Ages, people used a variety of frying pans, pepper mills, mallets, tongs, and waffle grids. Mm, waffles. The kitchens of this time also had rolling pens, weighing scales, and roasting forks. During the 17th and 18th centuries, the variety of professional kitchen appliances increased simplifying many labor-intensive tasks. Innovators such as, sorry, innovations such as pressure cookers, woohoo, I love the Instapot, salad spinners, potato peelers, and jelly molds became common. In the early years of the 20th century, kitchen design began to change with the use of factory-made elements. For example, the Huizier or Hoosier Manufacturing Company introduced the first ready-to-use kitchen storage cabinet. In, moder in the modern kitchen, you can see more specialization in kitchen tools and equipment. Appliances range from, from tools such as apple cores, corkscrews, and can openers to elaborate gas and electric cooking ranges food processors, dishwashers, refrigerators, and microwave ovens. So what's up with that hat, dude? The chef's uniform. The familiar clothing worn by professional chefs has an interesting history. In the mid 1800s, the famous chef Marie Anto Antone Carime introduced the white uniform that is now standard dress in professional kitchens everywhere. The white color signifies cleanliness in the kitchen. The double breasted jacket has, so it covers over twice. Uh, has many functions. Cooks can reverse the jacket to hide stains. The extra layer of fabric helps protect the chef from the heat of ovens and hot fluids that may get spilled in a kitchen. The thick cloth buttons can be washed many times. They help insulate the jacket from contact with hot vessels or heavy equipment. The tall headgear, called a toque, 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 dates back to the 16th century. At that time, some chefs in Europe were persecuted for their radical views. They took refuge in monasteries and adopted the high hats and long robes of priests. Karime suggested that the toques should be of different sizes. A tall toque identifies the chef. A novice cook wears a shorter toque. Still don't know if that's pronounced right, but. Professional training in culinary arts. In the United States, formal training in culinary skills is a recent development. Let's look at some of the training programs available at the high school and post-secondary levels. Hey, wait, that's you. High school programs. High schools teach culinary arts in two distinct streams, technical programs and family and consumer sciences. 
Both streams focus on culinary standards. However, the technical programs prepare students directly for the restaurant industry. There is no specific training or learning opportunity for becoming a high school culinary instructor. The ACF Education Foundation Accrediting Commission has certified about 200 high school programs. The National Restaurant Association, NRA, hmm, I don't think that's what those stickers are about, also supports 2,000 high schools with a two-year program. The Careers Through Culinary Arts program enables students to get ready for educational um, and career opportunities. Skills USA, which is a partnership of students, teachers, and industry, offers a culinary arts specialization program. The Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America, the FCCLA, a nonprofit national career and technical student organization for family and consumer sciences education, whew, offers programs on food production and services. So culinary classes are electives that you could take. Post-secondary programs, so these are after high school. Many institutions offer degrees and certificates in the culinary arts at the post-secondary level. Most states offer, offer a bachelor's degree in place of an associate's degree or certificate. So in a hierarchy, it would go high school, associates, bachelor's, and then master's. Bachelor's degrees typically include a core expertise in a field of study. Some four-year colleges offer, offer bachelor's degrees with some elements of cookery under hospitality management or sometimes under colonology. Colonology blends science and culinary arts and provides paths for careers in research. Oh, that's neat. Some colleges, such as Johnson and Wales uh, and the Culinary Institute of America, CIA, pause, it's the CIA, what? So if you type CIA chef.edu, you can go to their webpage and look at associate's degree programs, bachelor's, master's and certificate programs. They have a campus in San Francisco, so it's really close. Oh, I've been to New York. I have never been to Texas. I have been to Singapore. That's kind of interesting. I would love to go and check out this campus. I believe I know a chef who works there, but it's a friend of a friend. So maybe, who knows? Let's see what we can do. So the Culinary Institute of America, we read all that. Community colleges like Butte or Yuba College, community colleges as well as privately owned schools offer two years associates degrees and certificates in hospitality and culinary arts. Community colleges are publicly supported at the local level. So a two year associates degree Nowadays, you all get two years of free college. Maybe it's not super, super free, but it's mostly free, and it's way more free than when I went to school. So you could go to school after high school and in two years have an associate's degree in culinary arts. Community colleges are publicly supported at the local level. They offer programs in localities where there are viable hospitality businesses, career prospects. Um, there are specialized cooking schools available under both forms that offer diplomas and certificate courses for a variety of culinary arts subjects. Oh, so now this question wants you to match up who does what. 
I'm going to zoom out for a second. So a seafood person is the poisoner or Poseidoner. That's how I remember that. Okay. The person who directs cooks who do the roasting, deep frying, and boiling are the rotisserie. That's easy to remember. I like rotisseries. Um, the person who prepares breakfast, pastries, breads, and cakes would be the... Oh, uh oh, Polonger or Bollinger? Hmm. Entree does the vegetables and soups. Who cleans the vessels? Oh, Bollinger, maybe. These two might be mixed up. Oh, look, I was right. They were mixed up. Okay, try again. The rotisserie guy does this. The Bollinger is cleans the equipment. Is that what I said? And then the entree person goes here. The prolonger does that. Is that what I said? Or the other way around? I'm going to move that there. I think that goes there now. I can't remember which way I had it. Oh, no. Well, let's... Oh, crud. Yes! Okay. So, that's how that works. In this lesson, you learned that the culinary arts have evolved steadily since the early days of human civilization. Cookbooks and recipes have preserved the skills and knowledge of chefs from ancient times. Many famous chefs have helped evolve the culinary arts. Advancements in agriculture and equipment technology have helped shape the culinary arts across many centuries. Restaurants, which started as roadside inns, have evolved into fine dining establishments and fast food franchises. The Kitchen Brigade is a professional system for managing the activities in and around the modern kitchen. There are various training programs available at the high school and post-secondary levels with special focus on the culinary arts. All right. Now, it says, congratulations, you've completed the tutorial the tutorial, the history and development of culinary arts. I'm going to pause it because there's something that I know is on the test. I want to make sure you catch. So give me just a second. Okay, so here's an important part that I knew was on the test. So I wanted to make sure you caught. On slide 17, it says the 18th century, the French inventor Nicolas Appert conceived of the idea of pursue, preserving foods for commercial purposes. He found that he could preserve many foods for long periods of, if he kept them in sealed glass jars. He started a factory to produce canned foods in 1804. This was the beginning of the canning industry. So, preserving foods by uh, keeping them in sealed glass jars. Okay. Thanks. All right, now you've completed the tutorial. Please feel free to use this tutorial video when you are creating your creative art project and or when studying and completing the test. We do not have guided notes to use on the test and some of these questions can be challenging. Remember, study, and use your resources. Okay, bye.